Okay, so here's a reaction. What's the delta H for? See, NO plus half O2 makes NO2. And then here's what you do if you're kind of not really clued in. You're going to say, oh, well, you know what? That's just forming. NO2 is forming. So I'm going to look up the delta H for that as a heat of formation. And when you do and you find the heat of formation of the NO2, you're actually wrong because you know what? The NO2 is not forming from its elements. It's actually forming from an element and a compound. Mm, there's no chart for that. So what are you going to be able to, how are you going to be able to calculate the delta H for that reaction? Well, here's the thing. If you understand that delta H, and by the way, here's the thing. Uh, delta H, as well as uh, later what we're going to talk about delta G's and delta S's, they're things called state functions, which means that that number, that delta H, is a number that can be arrived at for that reaction that's completely independent of whatever pathway we take to be able to get there. So the point is, that, that this being a state function, there's a bunch of different pathways that can be taken to be able to get to this number. And what we can do with those numbers in the pathway is we can actually add them together to be able to get that change. So here's the deal. You can be asked, calculate the delta H for a reaction given a couple of other reactions that when, are, when they are added together will make that net reaction. And if that's true, and if you can get equations to add together to equal a net equation, then you can add their heats together to be able to get their total heat, or the total heat of the delta H for that reaction, the enthalpy change for that reaction. Now, here's the thing. In this question, <clears throat> we're given these two equations saying, well, let's add them together to get this one. Problem? If you add these two equations together right here, you have to add all the reactants together and all the products together. And so, look, you end up with one and a half N2s plus uh, two uh, N, uh, O2s makes two of those and one of those, and that's not that equation. So what, <laughs> what the teacher or what the professor wants you to do is solve the puzzle. It's a puzzle. You've got to solve the puzzle. Now, what is that puzzle? The thing is, these reactions might not be in the proper order right now in order to make this one. So what you're going to do is you're going to manipulate the equations to be able to then add them together so you can manipulate the heats and add those together to get the delta H. That's what Hess's law of additivity is all about. So you've got to actually solve a puzzle. So here's the puzzle. How do you get these two equations to make that one right there? Here's what I do. I always start off with that net equation that I want and I go to the first chemical. And if that chemical is a compound, I try to make sure that the other two reactions or three or four reactions that have to be added together have that chemical on the proper side in the proper amount. Now, here's something else I want to tell you. Elements, I don't hardly ever worry about elements. They generally, 99% of the time, take care of themselves. I worry about the compounds, whether they have to be cancelled out or manipulated to be able to be put on a, on a certain side. Elements, I just leave till the very end. So watch, here it comes. I want NO here on the left, but my NO is in this equation on the right. When I add these two together, the NO's are on the right. So I want to actually take this equation and I'll reverse it. So that means I want the NO over here and the N2 and the O2 over here. What happens to the delta H? All of a sudden, this reaction, which had a positive 180 as a heat change, is written in the reverse. When you write a reaction in the reverse, then that means you're going to have to flip the sign of the delta H. So, a reaction that was endothermic now becomes exothermic. Now, that equation is just this one in reverse to get the NOs on the proper side. Hey, guess what? I'm done with this equation. So I erase it. You either on your piece of paper you put a line through it and you say, I'm done with that one, or you just erase it. So here's the thing. These two equations hopefully will add together to make this. Ah, but here's the thing. I've got the NOs on the proper side, but not in the proper amount. Because I only want one of those, but I've got two here. So what do I do? I take everything in that equation, including the heat term, and I divide by two. So I've got two NOs here. I don't want two here, I just want one. So if I want one there, I better put a half here and a half here because I'm dividing everything in this equation by 2. What do I got to do that heat? I got to divide it by 2. 
So negative 180 becomes negative 90. Is that chemical now, right here, in the proper amount on the proper side? You betcha. I've adjusted that one absolutely perfectly. Now, where do I go next? Oh, there's my oxygens. I told you, elements work out for themselves. Don't bother with them. Okay. So now I go right to the NO2. Is it on the proper side when I add these two equations together? Yep. Is it in the proper amount? One mole here? Yep. One mole here. Guess what? These two equations are now going to be added together to be able to make the net one. How? Well, look. I've got NO here, plus, oh, but look at the half N2 on the product side and half N2 on the reactant side cancel out. We did something like that way back when, when we talked about ionic binary ionic compounds forming, and we did uh, 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 the, the Born-Haber process. Uh, so now, it's the same idea and the same concept. We can cancel out things that are on the reactant and product side uh, when they are in two different equations that we're adding together. They're gone. Half O2 and O2. That doesn't cancel. Well, yeah, it kind of does. A half O2 cancels out a half here and leaves you with a half. Get it? So it's a half O2 here makes NO2. Is that our net equation that we wanted? Yep. So what do we do with those two heats? We add them together. The delta H equals, and when you add those two numbers together, you get negative 56.8. But here's the thing. No numbers after decimal, one number after decimal. When you add or subtract significant digit rules, you retain the least number of decimal places. So negative 56.8 becomes negative 57 kilojoules, and that's the answer for that. That's Hess's law of additivity. Now, let's try some that are just a little bit more, well, complex, but you just follow those rules and it'll work out just great.